Hello everyone, welcome back. I got a lot of really good ones for you today. So, markets. Pretty boring day in the markets, kind of a summer doldrums, low volume, low liquidity kind of day. Mixed across the board, uh, dollar barely moved. Bitcoin holding onto that $20,000 mark. I think short of banks, I've said this in pre previous videos, leaving the building now and never coming back, this is, 20,000 is pretty strong psychological support. We did bri briefly dip below, but again, we shot right back up. So uh, I think short of the banks packing up and leaving, which I think polar opposite, I think they're just getting started. This could be it for the crypto winner. But again, if that 10-year uh, yield were to go to 5.5%, that could put Bitcoin at like eight, nine, ten thousand. 10,000. So I'm tentatively bullish Bitcoin here in November, December 2020. Bitcoin was like 18,000, shot up to 20,000, uh, and the banks never left, okay? So that, and then we started hearing about Larry Fink green lighting it. You know, so BlackRock had, you know, liked it, made some money off of it. So 20s where the banks showed up, I don't think they're gonna beat each other up too much more. It's already been pretty bad. We're no question in a bear market. We've had several liquidity events. So I think 20,000 Bitcoin tentatively could totally be wrong, but I think 20 is could be a bottom uh, it's been really ugly could it fall f farther it depends on what that 10-year yield does so that's kind of what I'm looking at that 10-year yield coming down to 3.15 percent though hey if we if we go down to three or even drop below it that's it I say risk assets will start moving up so Nasdaq gold Bitcoin oil would love to see the 10-year yield fall below three percent we'll see if that happens frankly just it being stable here would be good to see and then maybe risk assets would move up just because it's been so bearish and hawkish and sentiment has been so bad. Um, Fed Powell talked to, testified before uh, Senator Warren today, reiterating that he doesn't think any of these rate hikes are gonna cause gas prices or uh, groceries to prices to fall meaningfully. I agree with him there. We kind of talked about in other videos how you're just kind of stuck with this inflation. It's just a matter of how much worse the Fed will make it for you. Um, so I think inflation for the summer is going to, we're just going to kind of level off here with prices. Maybe prices will dip a little bit, but I don't think we're, you know, it's a brave new world. I don't think we're going to return to any other, any kind of 2019 uh, era prices for, for gas and groceries. I just don't see that. Not unless the Fed were to break the back of inflation by raising their interest rates like a ton. And next month, they're saying they'll raise 75 basis points or 50. I'm thinking they'll do 75 probably. I'm not really sure if they're saying they're going to do 50 or 75. It's not going to be one and it's not going to be, it's not going to be 100 basis points. So 1%, it's not going to be that on the, the Fed funds rate next month. And it's not going to be 25 basis points. It'll be 50 or 75, probably 75. But then they said um, 75 basis point rate hikes going forward would be a rare thing. So then... 25, 50, bring on some of those 25 basis point, 50 basis point rate hikes, uh, which will keep the Fed funds rate terminally below the inflation rate, which will be inflationary ultimately, I believe. So just my thoughts on that. I know people are saying yields and rates are structurally going to be higher and move much higher from here and this, that, and the other, but I'm not completely convinced, especially given developments out of the ECB in the last few days, the European Central Bank and the Eurozone are moving more or less towards an easing stance without uh, trying to expand their balance sheet. They're trying to put in some sort of uh, uh, stability in their debt market. And I don't see the Fed continuing to roll off its balance sheet and tighten its monetary conditions if our neighbors across the pond, uh, you know, can't and need to ease. Central banks do coordinate, okay? So don't think interest rate hikes and cuts from different central banks around the world happen in the vacuum of space. They all happen in the context of what the other central banks are doing. Kind of brings me back to if the Eurozone starts to ease, the Fed is going to at least have to hold pat on their tightening policy. If not, you know, start to ease themselves. That's just my thoughts on it. I don't see the dollar continuing to tighten against a slowing global economic backdrop. Uh, so the Fed, who does admit, you know, conditions can change, might be forced actually to cut rates. But I know nobody's talking about cutting rates right now. I'm very aware of that. Or just take some of these dozen or so rate hikes we have left off the table and that, you know, 
that falling behind and, and breaking the back of inflation will just further stoke inflation and cause risk assets to continue their march higher. So that's just kind of what I see going down. I don't see uh, meaningfully tightening Fed or ECB after this summer. Fed will come in probably at 75 basis points next month. Might give the market a vote of confidence that the Fed did something. Might at least keep prices from rising too much more over the summer. But I mean, look, equities are already in a bear market pretty much. And that's usually the point which the Fed starts to ease. So, you know, the debate right now, I guess, would be do you buy risk assets in equities and things now because you're anticipating the Fed ultimately flips or starts easing or flips dove or takes some rate hikes off the table later and then you shoot up? Or do you wait and not fight the Fed and you wait for the Fed to flip and then you follow the herd? I don't know the answer to that, right? I don't know anything. We're just we're just having a conversation, hanging out. Glad you're glad you're here. Glad you made it, by the way. Um, so I don't really know what the best decision to do is, but that's like the debate the elites are having, you know, amongst themselves, right? Do I do I wait to flip for the Fed to flip and then follow the Fed into risk assets and get ready for the the next bull run, or do I? get in now while everyone's afraid and the Fed is hawkish and then ultimately when they flipped up I'll have made a nice premium on, on the risk I took earlier so you know that's kind of your setup H kind of hard to tell uh, things aren't looking too good in Ukraine so just you know kind of look at that but I mean you'll just kind of see what I see they're outnumbered they're outgunned they're having a hard time some of their best forces are sur are surrounded at that chemical plant or about to be surrounded uh, once the if the Russians were to take that chemical plant they, and push on to Odessa. That's the economic and uh, financial hub for Ukraine. So, you know, just nothing too good out of there. It's really nasty. Uh, hopefully that doesn't spread and you're going to want to keep an eye on that. Same with China and the South China Sea. You can also keep an eye on Sri Lanka. Looks like they're going through some sort of honest default in their government. So uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, where a bailout comes from for Sh Sri Lanka. Um, yeah, that's just kind of what I see going on. I'm hoping this is the floor for cryptos. I'm, you know, I could totally be wrong, but I, you know, hold that 20K psychological support. I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin holds 20K and starts moving up and that was the bottom when we all look back and go, dang, like that was crazy cheap. You know, that wouldn't surprise me. But hey, if that, it's all that 10 year yield. Okay, so watch that. If that 10 year yield keeps climbing quickly. You know, look out below for everything. So it just kind of depends. But lately, like I said, we've seen that 10 year yield stabilize. I'd like to see it even move lower. That would be the green light for Bitcoin to move higher. Doesn't matter what you're trading, squishmallows, pencil erasers, keep an eye on those debt markets. Um, and keep an eye on that secret easing, right? That, what I mean by a secret easing is the ECB doesn't want to expand their balance sheet publicly, okay? They don't want to use conventional monetary policy and QE to just destroy their currency further in front of everybody and save their uh, debt market that way and save their stock markets. They want, they want to control inflation and support their debt markets and bring price stability to like all their rich people stuff in asset prices, right? So the Fed is in the same position. On the one hand, if the Fed keeps raising interest rates, quickly and aggressively, it's just gonna make the beast system, the 401ks, the pensions, the stock market, the real estate price tags, the everything price tags just beat up that much more. So if, they, if the Fed fights inflation by raising the interest rate, they beat up their beast, but their beast is already in a bear market. This is normally when the Fed flips and protects their beast and more or less moves to an easing stance and then we inflate and let the bulls run. But the Fed doesn't want to do that because they really don't want to keep soaking inflation with the inflation genie out of the bottle. So that's the tightrope, the Fed and the ECB for Europe. So the Fed for America and the ECB for Europe are gonna play. Those central banks for their respective areas are going to play a game of how can I get away with saving my currency, rolling off my balance sheet, tightening my monetary conditions, and keeping asset prices inflated, getting a vote of confidence and credibility from the rich people that are like funding, you know, all my markets. So 
they want to save this, their stock markets and they want to save their currencies at the same time. But the problem is if they save their currency and break the back of inflation, it'll destroy their stock markets and their stock markets are already pretty beat up. But if they go back to save their stock market, they're just gonna destroy their currency more. So that's the balancing act. They don't wanna ease publicly, but they do wanna support their markets. So it's like a secret QE now, like, cause we can't do QE five, six, seven, eight, you know what I mean? So now it's like, the Fed is gonna say they're tightening, say they're rolling off their balance sheet, say they're raising interest rates, and then find a way to like not, and then find a way to like get everyone on the same page that like, see, we're fixing inflation and saving the dollar. While well, like the NASDAQ, Bitcoin, gold, every oil's just shooting to the moon. Look, the Fed is watching the markets, okay? So we've kind of had that debate. You might be in the bull, the dollar bull camp that says the Fed is gonna protect the consumers, the dollar, the economy at the expense of uh, the beast system. And then you have those that say, no, 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 the Fed will protect the markets. And if consumers get walloped at the pump and the grocery store, so be it. That's kind of like the balancing act. It's kind of hard to tell which way we're gonna go. Everybody has their reasons to believe what they want, but I see sentiment is just so bad. So when I look at things like the NAS, like high growth tech and uh, the crypto space, I just see, it's just sentiment is so bad. You know, 10, at, 10 out of 10 people are bears right now, right? So if anything, that makes me want to be bullish, okay? Makes me want to be bullish, all right? There it is. So you know, I don't know if that's much of a reason to be. I don't know if I'm supposed to be waiting on the Fed to flip dove to follow them and let the bulls run and I'm supposed to hold my cash until then, I don't know. Uh, we're just gonna have to see what the best move would have been, but just kind of giving you an idea where I'm at. So I'm waiting for the Fed to come back. <laughs> I'm waiting for them to find a way to have their cake and eat it too. I'm waiting to see sentiment uh, improve. And if everyone wants to be a bear, then maybe be the brave bull, but who knows, right? Who knows? Till next time.